good evening everyone welcome back on the next sessions on investment opportunities and east africa uh, our today's speaker is uh, cs satyamurthy uh, let me introduce him c satyamurthy was born and brought up in mumbai after his schooling and graduation from chetnam college he chose to be pursue career as a chartered, chartered accountant having completed his article c with ks ir and company mumbai passed the final examination in november uh, 1971 he worked for industry group till april 20, 1975 alongside he also become a cma earlier this was called as icwa and a company secretary from the respective institute it is said that our destiny is pre written in june 1975 he along with his wife landed in dar es salaam tanzania very good the job as fc with the medium size industry group it was like swimming in uncharted pot water as he come one trend to accept the grow with the environment dar es salaam is much smaller city as compared to mumbai his journey to tanzania lasted for 15 years it was a life of fulfillment of professional achievement contribution to the group growth social interaction and social services as a rotarian then he moved to the kenya in 1990 kenya is a capitalist economy is unlikely socialist tanzania one could feel the difference in every sphere he is here till now he joined the ceo of an industry group and retired late last year during the period of mr satyamurthy had the fortune of doing many things on the professional sides and contribution enormously to the growth of the enterprise enterprise <coughs> kenya also gave him the opportunities to start and travel and tourism business for his wife who is professional travel agent currently he is consulting in the area of project turnaround strategic and financial management additionally he also active in his family business travel and tourism business mr satyamurthy also has been the chairman of nehruvi chapter of ica along with a very enthusiastic team kenya is one of the few chapter who signed the mou with the local institute issued he is an active member of chapter where chapter is having more than 200 members so welcome sir satyamurthy sir over to you thank you <clears throat> thank you uh, deepak for that very generous introduction uh, let me get start with the salutations to our president nihar jambusuria ji your excellencies uh, shri binash pradhan of uh, ambassador of uh, i come from india to tanzania our Shri Ashish Sinha, the Deputy High Commissioner in Nairobi, uh, CPA Pais Maneno, Executive Director of uh, NBA, and of course, CA Kapil and uh, Deepak of uh, Dar es Salaam and Nairobi chapters, respectively, distinguished fellow speakers and fellow chartered accountants, all the respected ladies and gentlemen. attending this conference jambo and greetings from nairobi at the outset i must thank uh, both the chairman for giving me this opportunity to address the august gathering <clears throat> august audience and be able to listen to distinguished speakers as well indeed there is no end to learning and these are opportunities that give uh, that we get for of skilling and adding value to ourselves and i i must thank the previous speakers for what we have gained today and also our leaders at the institute icai should be saluted for opening our eyes for such virtual conferences during this difficult pandemic period of covid one of the thing that struck me was the presence of cpa Pais and of course my colleagues from Dar es Salaam and uh, the whole of Tanzania, you know this stirs nostalgia because as uh, Deepak mentioned, I have spent 15 years 
in Tanzania. And uh, in the good old days when I went there in 1975, only NBA was the only, uh, uh, in a way, not exactly a total institute. It was just a National Board of Accountants. And uh, I happened to be now member number 56 of those years. We were very few chartered accountants, yet we had a good um, you know, gathering of chartered accountants and equally so ICWA people also. So I still remember the, the then uh, secretary, uh, Mr. Shaban. Anyway, so much for our life in Dar es Salaam, we have enjoyed. Coming to our topic for the day, which is more crucial, the investment opportunities in East Africa. I'm not sure how many of the attendees are aware of certain things. What exactly is East Africa? I might take a couple of minutes to explain what uh, makes East Africa. Of course, geographically, it's to the east of the African continent and consists of six member countries, namely Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, and South Sudan now, the recently joined South Sudan. So we make up what is called the East African community today. Earlier on, until independence, and a little thereafter, until 75, memory serves me right, until 1975, I think, we were East African community consisting only of Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. And we had common currency, common income tax, common port, port authority, common airlines called East African Airways. I have flown in, the, in East African Airways, so I know and many other institutions which were part of the community. And we operated as one entity, one tax structure, et cetera. Unfortunately, the member states decided to disband the structure and form their own institutions, which we have till today uh, in our lives. We, we still have, notwithstanding that the, the East African community broke up then, still we are together. And a lot of things join us together, the language, the culture, and on the economic uh, front, also credit, credit with goes to the uh, governments. We have free trade within the EAC. And also we have what we call the EAC common external CET, common external tariff. That helps us protect our industries and the growth of the region. To, to that extent, I think we must thank the governments for agreeing to move in that direction. We'll, I'll share with you some numbers as we go now. And just an introduction again for those who are not familiar with Africa as a whole and East Africa in particular. We are no longer a dark continent at, as it used to be uh, construed. There's always construed an uh, undiscovered destination and particularly for investments. One would shudder to think, as I said, I mean, I personally chartered in, I came into uncharted waters. Same token, even till today, many of our people in India back home are not actually fully familiar with what exactly is Africa <clears throat> and East Africa in particular. And East Africa in our um, people, Indians in particular, came here more than 200 years ago. And you can imagine what it would have been then, the places like Dar es Salaam, Mombasa, Nairobi, Zanzibar, they came to these places, started trading, and a lot of tradition has been maintained till today. Yes, we, as a continent, Africa is uh, basically agroeconomic continent, and agriculture is a very strong um, area of, um, growth. Yet, one may ask, why is, are we looking at uh, starvation for that matter? Right now, recently, as I'm talking to you now, we are going through a bit of uh, issue in uh, northern Tanzania and uh, northern Kenya with uh, famine. That's because our agriculture has been exposed to a lot of vagaries of nature. And that again speaks for how, speaks for our um, lack of uh, infrastructure, lack of planning in that area. 
and agro business has been low on investments. May I now request um, Sia Kapil to just share the screen? Yes, sir. Sir. Yeah. Uh, can we move to the next one? Yeah. Let's look at the investment opportunities. Basically, we have seven areas where investment opportunity exist and continue to be supported by the respective governments. One area is agriculture. What we are looking to in the in the in the area of agriculture is agri, agri production leading to self sufficiency in food and also for exports. The whole region is endowed with a lot of uh, potential for agriculture and also for export oriented uh, agriculture produce. In we are one of the largest exporters of fruits, vegetables, and horticulture products like roses we we are one of the best in the world i would say and there is enough scope for uh, people who want to come and invest in this area the world is open for the market and our process the our products come under good high premium both in all the three countries of uh, not so much with rwanda and burundi but more with uh, kenya and tanzania and uganda as I said, agriculture is one area where people can look at investments. The next area is um, affordable housing. Yes, indeed, we do ha have a lock lack of uh, affordable housing in this part of the world. <clears throat> Our government has put that as a priority at, in Kenya and Tanzania. If we can promote this by way of investing in uh, land and coming and uh, giving the people of all these uh, countries, affordable housing. <clears throat> it's a good investment to be in. And also the government will give a lot of uh, support in this area. The third area, of course, is manufacturing. As manufacturer, manufacturers, our industrial base is not as large as India. And in fact, what we would uh, call large industries in this part of the world, would probably qualify to be a, uh, if not a small scale, at least a medium scale industry in India. But this is in keeping with the population and in keeping with the requirements of the population. So there is a, a tremendous scope in many areas of uh, manufacturing. And uh, we are endowed with a lot of abundant natural resources like cotton, sisal, gemstones, minerals, <clears throat> and of course we have, in Uganda has got gold, Tanzania has got gold, uranium, coal, and even diamonds. So all those investors who are keen to con come here are most welcome with their expertise, and we could um, have a good support system mechanism here with the governments having good laid out policies and you can participate in our manufacturing area. The next one area for investment available is blue investments. As uh, you know, we are <coughs> blessed with a long sea shoreline on the Indian Ocean <coughs> and also into Lake Victoria. This offers a good potential for investment in fishery industries. And this is a 100% export uh, oriented uh, project. Already, as it is now, we have export, or export going on in this area, but more investment is uh, welcome. The next area where we need to look at investment possibility is healthcare. Yes, indeed, our healthcare system is not at the moment the best. We do have healthcare, but not to the extent that one would uh, call it the best. So we require a lot of investment in this area so that we are able to reach out to the semi-urban areas and rural areas. That's the, that's the crucial issue. And uh, we are unable to reach there because of lack of investments. And uh, 
it's a very good project. Those who are interested in setting up uh, health facilities, I think it's a very good idea to be here. Now, we also have the area which is a very great um, export honor for us is tourism. We have already a good uh, infrastructure, and yet there is scope for undiscovered destinations or, uh, you know, I would call um, unexplored destinations, there is investment possibilities there. We are, have, apart from wildlife, all the three countries here and also Rwanda, we have wildlife, we have beaches, we have mountain gorilla, we have rafting, we have mountain climbing and many other attractions. Investment in, is sought in the areas which are currently not served. This sector, for instance, is not just a large export earner for us. <clears throat> it's also a large employer with a lot of skill requirements that go with the business. Now let's look at our own profession. What can chartered accountants from India do for us? Yes, there is several areas of expertise that we require here for forensic audits, project management, tax planning, and even uh, IT uh, skills. We do have tremendous application for these areas. The only thing we can do, I suggest is that, yes, as you come here <coughs> and uh, team up with our, with our members in all these countries who are already in practice in East Africa, that will give you a good springboard to know what is happening and also to uh, help, you know, enhance the areas of expertise here. Aspiring CAs can also qualify with the, under the local uh, requirements as CPAs, and also that will in turn give them the possibility to practice eventually. These are basically the investment potential areas which we have looked at for our fraternity, as well as those who are interested to start businesses outside of India and in particular in East Africa. One may definitely ask a question. We are talking about attracting investments. So what do we offer? First and foremost, we offer protection. Investments, foreign investments are protected by law. All the, all the countries have put in place the investment laws and investment authorities for streamlining and assisting investors. So one can be rest assured that you come here duly protected, not to worry about many others, uh, you know, any major problem. The second strength we have here is the power generation and also water. So in industries and uh, manufacturing in particular that require a um, lot of power, we, we have the power, we have power generation and water is not a problem. So if your industry requires these two as a critical component or a factor of production, yes, we offer this. All the three, all the countries here in East Africa, they are served by very good ports of Mombasa, Dar es Salaam, Tanga, and of course, uh, we are developing Lamu as a port. So port, excellent port infrastructure is available. And eventually for inland transportation, we have got good railway network, which we recently built to the standard gauge railway, and also excellent road infrastructure for inland transport. More and road, more roads are being built, more transport facilities available. So that should not be a major hurdle at all. Now, the third one we offer in East Africa is export processing zones and uh, <coughs> SEZs, which will in turn make available to you uh, importation of uh, duty-free goods for purely for export. Kenya has allowed at the moment 20% of the total output to be to be sold in the local market, if need be. 
and that's a bit of a relief for those export of uh, APZ factories which are unable to export 100 percent. We have in place, all the countries have in place some incentives for investment and tax benefits, which we will look at uh, now in, in the next slides. We assure capital and dividend, repatri dividend repatriation. So again, your investment is protected. Returns are assured for remittance. We have very good um, capital market here and a number of uh, P firms are operating, funding not just uh, uh, big enterprises. We have got funding for a lot of startups, again, in the IT area. Incidentally, Kenya and Tanzania and Uganda also, and Rwanda also. Uh, there are a lot of IT startups which have benefited a lot from PE funding from other sources. So in case any Indian uh, PE firm would like to come and participate, the scope is there. There is also a big organized uh, capital market, very well uh, managed. And we have got a fairly good um, setup for share trading. Of course, not as big as BSC or in the National Stock Exchange of India, but we are, we are there at least. We, we can assure you that we have a highly skilled labor force available in this country because they have been trained over time. And depending on the kind of labor that you require, you will find the same available. At the same time, the governments have put in place also training institutions, what we call vocational training centers. The skills are developed in these institutions. So availability of labor, skilled labor is not a serious problem. Investors are allowed to bring expatriates for key positions. I'm sure um, even among the existing chartered accountants here, uh, we have a number of them who have been deputed by the Indian multinationals as well as uh, global multinationals. So that again, investors are allowed to bring expatriates. So your management at the top level is not a serious problem. You bring your own people. On the professional side of accounting, architecture, legal, the whole setup is very good. We have got our own um, legal um, experts, professional charter accountants, architects who can help you in implementing the projects. Now let's look at some key information that might be of interest and that could help you in making some and uh, getting some understanding of what we are talking about. What I have given in this table is the land mass, the population, the, what is the GDP now, and the per capita GDP. I would only say that Africa, why is Africa the next best destination? Africa as a whole is looking at a population of 1.3 billion people. And East Africa in particular, <clears throat> you're looking at a market size close to 200 million people. That brings a, quite an advantage for manufacturing industries to look at the market potential depending on the product you are looking at. That's a big market by, any, uh, by our standards. And Africa as a whole is now joining hands in various uh, you know, uh, economic uh, thing, um, association, and it will promote a lot of intra-African intra trade. And as I said earlier, manufacturing industries here are protected in the region with a common tariff, what is called common external tariff. So all imports are um, subject to duty, most of them, and also, import substitution is a very good idea we can promote in this part of the world. The next slide will give you some indication of what are the resources available, the major industries that we have, and potential investments. 
as again, going back to where we started, the 70 areas that is, that is of paramount importance to us and foreign investors are most welcome to invest in these areas. Come and talk to us and come and invest in these areas. In conclusion, I would say that uh, potential investors, we have with us here the strength in the form of our own chapters. And we are here to serve you with whatever support that you require and our chartered accountants are fully geared to serve you with a lot of help that you require in bringing your investments here. I hope I have covered a fair amount of what is the investment potential uh, in these countries. And uh, we'd be glad to answer any questions if you have. Once again, I want to thank Sia Kapil and Deepak for this opportunity and congratulations to the entire team that worked tirelessly to get this conference in place. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we have a couple of uh, questions here. Uh, I will take one, one by one. We have first questions. Uh, does, uh, how does government support the area of affordable housing? The government, uh, of Kenya in particular, I can talk about Kenya as such now. They have identified the improvement of slum areas as the primary objective to give them affordable housing so that the environment is then cleaner and the objective of people living in decent accommodations is made available. The government supports you, us with the land, which is belonging to the government and you can come in with the investment and uh, we are allowed to sell the apartments. Also, housing finance is available to the people who want to buy those apartments so they can, they have access to loans from the housing finance company. And equally, even uh, some private banks are able to lend. Uh, next question is, uh, I think is a good, very good question. Uh, can individual become an investor while working as an expert for other organization? And is there any minimum threshold investment amount? So <clears> I think this we can divide in two parts. First is, as a working in an expert, can you become an investment investor? No. When you work for somebody in all these countries, you work under a work permit, which only entitles you to be employed. You should not have, or you're not allowed to have investments, then you can, you have to change your permit status and come in as an investor. But you can't drive two horses at the same time. So you've got to chase, you got to learn, uh, you got to be ready to quit one and get into another. True. And the next, the second part is about the minimum threshold investment. So I think like Kenya, we have $100,000. So what about have, some of the, you know, Kenya has a minimum investment uh, threshold of $100,000. But again, these are all subject to individual projects. Right. What is the size of the project? What kind of uh, investment you're looking at? Yes, then you can take exemptions and get approvals. They have put a limit of 100,000 just to make sure that all and sundry just don't jump into the fray. You've got to have projects which are of importance to the country. So they will make an evaluation based on that. That's the reason they have put in a bit to stall people who are really not uh, having the money and just want to come in as invest, so-called investors. So that's the reason. Other countries have their own threshold as well. Even Uganda has got a threshold, Tanzania has got a threshold, Rwanda has got certain threshold. And uh, in fact, I must say at this juncture, there is a, all of you are welcome to visit this uh, site <clears throat> for EAC Guide to Investments. 
and that will give you a, it's a very um, very good site which gives complete detail of whatever is the regulation in each of these countries it's called east african community investment guide and it's a useful source of uh, information and resource so all are encouraged to go through that so get the guidelines clear then make decisions uh looking into your vast experience in africa from 1975 to till in multiple countries i have very good good questions why foreign direct investment in africa are not as much as uh, in asia perhaps we don't have numbers there's a lot of fdis coming in both into all the three major countries of east africa kenya tanzania and uganda yeah. definitely it's there it's just that we don't know about it a lot of information is available on the government uh, websites yes relatively india's requirement is much larger india's projects are much much larger so the interest of all the multinationals or foreign fdi constitutions is a lot more in india, compared to india uh, than us because our population is small here again i would say that if we are looking at the potential where you have a region population of 200 billion and africa as a whole with a 1.1 billion plus population fdis are coming in even today they are there but given the uh, vagaries of certain factors here which affect our investments so fdis keep flowing in and out um, they are not steadily there only in certain projects you know uh, we let's look at uh, our oil exploration unfortunately it backfired tulo oil was coming in with mil- billions of dollars uganda has got investment in oil drilling tanzania has got into natural gas these things do happen it's just that we need a lot more information fdis do come in here it's still politically all these countries are a stable very stable democracy yes in like in every democracy you'll have all these uh, little uh, aberrations but barring that we are very stable nothing uh, major has happened in all the f- uh, three countries which are basically uh, essentially east african community tanzania uganda and kenya we have been relatively stable yes small issues will come have come they'll all be a thing of the past very soon because we know as countries we can't afford those uh, slips in our democratic setup so uh, i think uh, the time factor i have to uh, stop that one uh, obviously what are the questions come we will try to uh, organize the answer maybe one to one or maybe through the chat system something uh, so now i request just just, uh, yeah. just, just, a, one just okay. a one question just just a one question satyamurthy sir Uh, from my side just for the knowledge of uh, the participants here because i know for a fact that most of the participants are from tanzania and kenya okay they are from the rest of the world also as i mentioned in the beginning uh, what is the in the in the kenya and the neighboring part what is the is there any restriction on buying of immovable property like here it is in kenya in, in tanzania we have a restrictions like you need to have a 51% share holding otherwise you need to go to in investment center and they give only the derivative rights what is the status uh, of having the immovable property in kenya sir kenya is open okay any foreigner can buy property without any restriction whether you, i mean whether whether you are living here or not living here okay. either way kenya very is good. open on this very good very good perfectly fine yes deepak ji that will also i'm sorry tanzania will also come slowly and gradually to that yes, level yes i i i, I feel so take, yeah you know, slowly in kenya we i'm sorry you know in no, kenya no, yeah. we have, from day one we have not followed a socialist uh, path uh, it's a very um, very different amalgam of uh, socialism and capitalism which exists here right. yes we have certain things which are definitely socialistic in style but rest of the country is predominantly into private uh, enterprises and that's one of the reasons that we uh, kenya has stayed far ahead of the rest of the 
PAC. But Tan Tanjan is catching up extremely well, and I'm sure they will be there. No doubt, no doubt. I feel also the same, sir. Actually. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. I request, uh, yeah. I, finally, I want to thank you all for, I don't know why I should be, I, I'm <laughs> part of you, and uh, this one, uh, Kapil, thank you very sir, much for sending it all the way to Nairobi. No, it's I a really small part. It. A small, yeah, a small I, token of appreciation for all the efforts you have put, sir. And uh, thank you. And uh, if, you can, if you can open it and uh, if you can open it and please show it to the participants. We have crafted uh, this certificate on a locally made wood from Tanzania. You know, that's again very important. If you can, if you can use, open the wrap. Yeah, yeah, I, I opened. Open. Yeah, if you I open and just. Oh, oh yeah. it's an open one. I thought I thought it's the first time. Oh, oh, perfectly fine. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And using indigenous resources, yes, a big plus. Yes, thank that you. is Thumbs what up. the thought. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir.